This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. David, I know you just got on a run Aaron Waco. How's the weather looking down there, man? As people are going to be making their way from Dallas, from Arkansas for this game tomorrow. It rained, I think, a couple of days ago, which we need a lot of that. But in the, uh, in the you know, early afternoon, middle of the afternoon, it gets to be pretty nice. And so, and then it gets right back down to cold. It's, you know, it is late January, so we're pretty lucky when it's not like this all the time. Uh, as long as it's about above 52 or 3, and I get a chance to play golf somewhere <laughs> on Sunday afternoon, then I'm good. By the way, on that QC Kinetics, you uh, wait till you get to be my age. It's 63, and you wake up one day at your left foot, the next day at your knee, the next day at your back, the next day, well, <laughs> that stuff is great. I've heard a lot about it, but uh, wait till you get to be my age. But that's why I work out, so I can try to avoid some of that. Yeah, so where do you play golf at around there, man? If, if people have some free time in the Dallas or Waco area and they're making their way there and they want to get 9 or 18 in, where do you go play at? Well, the, the country club is shut down for right now. They started digging it up uh, late in the year. They're going to be on a complete restructured, you know, re- replacing a lot of things, changing a few deals. But there's a course that's called Bear Ridge. It's uh, one of the original courses where Baylor Golf used to play and practice. And then it's, it's been through two or three ownerships, and, and now they're starting to try to get that thing back. It's not in the greatest shape, but it's in a great shape compared to what it was about two years ago so that's where i play Uh, you know i came out of the tyler area and they had like five country clubs in the city in tyler which is about the same size but the the, uh, options here are not quite the same but it's not like you know we're famished for great golf courses but you know it i i I never played during football season ever in my entire 42 years i'd never played golf during football season late august i would get my handicap about where i wanted it to be and then about the time i did that i shut it down because i just never had time and this year i made a commitment to go out and play every thursday morning when i had everything kind of put to sleep for broadcast or the shows and all that and it really did give me some good mental you know like fresh air so to speak so I know I'm talking too much about that, but hope to have you. Hope you guys are having a great day. Well, I'm excited to get to Waco tomorrow. You talk about mental toughness and acuity. I mean, that's what this Baylor team is displaying as late. I, they've either won four, st- five straight. I forget. David, what's been the key to Baylor getting back on track when a couple weeks ago they were looking like a shell of themselves? Yeah, they really were. They were 0 3. They lost two games to two teams that are right now right above or right into the top 10 in Kansas State, TCU. But they lost those two games at home on what was the last possession. So that, that you know, in the Big 12, like anything, it's you really just can't lose road games. If you're going to, then you got to go bait. You know, if you lose one home game, in my opinion, if you're going to compete for the championship, then you got to go win two road games to offset it. Uh, they did lose to, obviously, Kansas State, an emotional night with Jerome Tang, and then the TCU is just a team that right now – Man, they just destroyed Kansas on Saturday. But they were playing very good defense, bottom line. They have guards that can fill it up. They can shoot it. At times, there's maybe one or two that aren't as sharp as perhaps you would like to see if you're Scott Drew or a Baylor fan. But they just were playing terrible transition defense. They And obviously, with that, that means you're also not getting you know those extra four to six offensive rebounds to keep anyone from kicking it out next thing you know. They just... There was a couple of guys who were new, the transfers, Jalen Bridges, West Virginia, Caleb Lohner from Brigham Young, and I think they weren't real sure or they were unsure a little bit of really fitting into their role. Not that they didn't understand their role. It's just taken a little bit of time. I also, to be honest, I don't think the schedule ever lets up. Texas Tech right now is having a horrific start, but they still take people down to the wire. They got blown out by West Virginia at home, and I wonder where they are right now. But there are no gimmies. And I, I mean that kind of might sound silly when Tech is 0-8, but there really are no gimmies in this conference. Like in the SEC in football, there are rarely any gimmies. So uh, I, I, they, they've played much better transition defense. They're, um, they're, they're also kind of in this little, you know, they got some confidence. And they've got, plus I mentioned the transfers, they also had the super, like, All-American point, uh, not point guard, freshman guard in Keontae George. You know, when you have been the alpha for the last four 
five years of playing basketball, and then you come in and you've got two guys who have won national titles at guard and Flagler and Cryer, you know, there's probably times at the end of the game when Keontae is used to being the one who takes the shot, and it's kind of taken. He's got no – it's not the ego. He's not like – he just, you know, it's, it, everyone's kind of learning a little bit. The one thing that concerns me about them is they don't really have what I think is a true point guard. Uh, Davion Mitchell is as good as anyone we've ever seen at that position, both on offense and defense. I do think that they're kind of like they're doing as much as they can with who they have at point guard, Flagler, sometimes Cryer, sometimes Keontae, but a legitimately two – true point guard i think they're learning that role a little bit rotating that a little bit and that's kind of that's kind of gotten better too We're talking with david smoke sikkim 365 here in the morning rush david if you're scott drew what scares you about this razorback squad i i mean good gosh they're good i mean they're, they're really good i you know i gotta be honest i haven't seen them as much I, I, I have seen them, and it looks like to me, like last year when Baylor played Alabama, remember in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, Alabama just blew their doors off. They were better across the board in a lot of ways, more athletic, more angular, um, and, and Baylor was really good at that time. It's, I mean, they were really good. I think it was right before they may have lost Jonathan Chalmachacha with that horrific knee injury. And But I, I just think that the athleticism, and when I say that, depending on the sport, it, it's different. But Alabama can get up and down. We know Musselman does a great job with what he does as a head coach. But I, I think Alabama's length, Baylor has length. They have Flo Thamba inside, but he's not a jumper. You know, he's not a guy that's going to spring. Uh, they've got a young freshman, Ulu Juwana, uh, who is – like tripping with a maze, very raw. But I mean, when he wants, it, when he gets it, he gets it. And I, I can't wait to see what he ends up being in the end. Jonathan Chamuchacha was working out. He did warm ups the other night. I don't think he's ready to play yet. He obviously would make a difference. But I just think Alabama's quickness. I think Baylor's good. I think Baylor's really good, and they're on the edge of being really good if they can somehow keep this going against uh, Arkansas, and then they play at Texas on Monday night, and we know that's another, you know, like, here we go. But I, I think Alabama's ability just to explode might be, and, I, and Baylor's allowed that to happen. TCU scored, what was it, I don't know, in the 80s. A, a Kansas State game went into overtime, and so that game, I think, ended up in the 80s or 90s, and that to me, is something as someone who covers them, we just never really saw that for about three or four years. Somebody might get hot and just have a, a night, but they just, they, they, they do give up some runs. They've gotten better with that, and that's my concern if I'm Scott Drew. I want to ask you about Anthony Black. Here's a young man whose dad went to Baylor. He chose to play at Arkansas. First time getting a chance to play a school that he almost went to in the Baylor Bears. How do you think his emotions are going to be walking into the Farrell Center tomorrow? Well, obviously, uh, that's, an, that's a great question. And, and and his dad, Terry, was fantastic. His dad, Terry, you talk about explosive. Guy who put on, you know, back in the day, uh, he, he doesn't want to hear that. It makes it sound like he's old. But, you know, he was explosive. And I had some of the most on – I wasn't here yet. I still know that he had some of those, you know, like highlight reel dunks and uh, follow-ups, et cetera. Uh, I, I I think, you know, he's – Black has played enough national ball, played that national schedule with Duncanville, uh, an, an unbelievable team. And so I don't know if anything ever gets him, like, to the point where it's different than any other place. But I would think that's with the lineage. I think it'll be interesting because of the connection. Um, I don't know really in the end where Baylor was as far as decision-making. I don't think they were in that last – part of the discussion. I know obviously that both know each other is really good. Baylor's elite and Terry and, and, and black is elite, but um, I, maybe there is, I don't know. You know, here's the thing when his dad played, he, I don't even think he wouldn't have been born. You know, he may have seen highlights and stuff like that, but I'm sure he knows. And, and, and maybe that might get him even more motivated as well. Uh, you know, playing in Duncanville, which is about an hour and 20 minutes South or North, of, of Waco, he knows what Baylor's done recently, and and I think he, he I think he'll be just fine tuned just to play him in the first place. But also, yes, there's got to be a little bit of that because of as I said, the legacy factor. 
David, we've talked to a good chunk of our listeners. A lot of fans trying to make their way to Waco, Texas tomorrow. We're going to be doing the post game at Twisted Root. I love George's. My dad's a Baylor alum. Been there many a times. Also been to Health Camp. Love that place. What are some other food hot spots in Waco that play that people need to go eat tomorrow? So we let you go here. Twisted Root is right there across the campus. It's got great food. Uh, there's a place called Milo's if you're looking for something maybe a little bit uh, higher level, and I don't mean like higher level like snooty, but a little bit of a different menu. Uh, you know, here's the thing. When I moved here 12 years ago, there were two or three places that everybody brought up every single time, and sometimes the lazy narrative is those are the only three places left in Waco, which was George's and Vtex, and there may have been a uh, health camp. I, By the way, I've been there. My trainer doesn't like it when I admit that, but... Um, <laughs> There, there are there are places everywhere. I don't I don't really I'm not one that goes out and eats a lot. I go home. I cook a lot for myself. But uh, there, there's plenty of places. Uh, you know, that you have the standard. You know, chain. I, I'm trying to think of if I had my co-host Paul, who's like an absolute aficionado when it comes to restaurants and stuff. But I tell you, there's a little place if you like Cajun food. It's called Fridays. It, it, it's an old kind of a, a little bit of a hole in wall, one story building that's off of what they call Dallas Highway North. Uh, and, and if you like Cajun food, I would I would think they would be open tomorrow. You know, some places shut it down. On I don't I don't know why, but I think that's if you like Cajun food, that's a great option called Fridays. I think that, that you'd like that. David, we'll leave it there. David Smoke, Sikkim 365. Really appreciate you giving us some in-depth perspective on the Baylor Bears and Waco overall. Excited to see this game at the Farrell Center tomorrow, David. Hey, you guys have a fun trip. Be careful. Enjoy the weekend, and thank you. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts.